I welcome all of you in the another session of transportation engineering. As you all know that we have been discussing about the second segment that is highway transportation. As I have already narrated in my previous videos that highway transportation plays an important role because various important topics such as highway geometric design, traffic engineering, pavement engineering, pavement maintenance, various road plans of highway engineering are covered in this highway transportation segment. And currently we are discussing about the highway geometric design. We have learned about various cross-sectional elements of highway engineering. Now we are going towards another segment. I welcome all of you in the transportation engineering segment. What we are going to cover is basically we have been covering the parts of cross-section of road and its elements such as camber. In this segment, we are going to cover the topics such as pavement surface characteristics, FUL. I will describe in detail what actually FUL stands for. Then we will discuss about super elevation, the concept of super elevation and its advantages. We will discuss about the definition, the concept and the advantages as I have mentioned. Okay, let us discuss about camber. We will discuss about the definition of camber, then the purposes of camber. Let me tell you that camber looks like this. See, this is the part of camber. We will discuss about the requirements, the required values, C, B, W, and E. Okay, let us start the segment. First, let us learn about the definition. See, camber is also known as cross slope. This is the first thing that you need to have in your mind. Camber is also known as cross slope. It is the slope which is provided to the road surface in the transverse direction. See, whenever we are traveling on the road, let us assume that this is the plan of the road. If we are traveling on this road surface in this direction, while traveling, we will experience a slope of this particular part like this. Whenever we are traveling, we will observe that this kind of slope is provided on the road surface. See, whenever we are traveling on the road, the surface of the road will never be completely plain. It will always have a certain slope. See, this is the central line or alignment. You can observe that the slope is in this transfer direction and it is in this transfer direction from this point. This point, which is the highest point on the road surface, is known as crown. And from crown to the edge of the road on the either side, this slope or cross slope, as it is provided in the cross direction, it is called as camber. It is provided in order to drain off the water, rainwater, which is collected at the surface of the road. So, this is about camber. <coughs> If we discuss about the purposes, then there are main three purposes. First is that to remove the rainwater from the pavement surface. If the slope is provided like this, then the water can be drained off automatically from the surface of the road. It also prevents the entry of the rainwater into the bituminous layers and it also pre prevents the entry of rainwater into the subgrade soil. So we have discussed in the pavement engineering section that there are four layers of road segment. Subgrade layer, subbase layer, base layer, and surface layer. If the surface of the road is provided with this kind of surface, this kind of slope, what will happen is that the rainwater will not be percolated into the lower layers. It will be directly drained off from the surface. So these are the purposes of camber. Let us discuss about the requirements of the pavement. Camber, that the required camber of the pavement, it completely depends on the type of pavement surface, that which kind of pavement surface we are dealing with and the amount of rainfall. See, before jumping into the details, let me tell you that there are total four type of camber, C, B, W and E. Uh, this is the short form, this is the short key that I have created to make it easy for you to understand. See, there are two kinds of rainfall situations. Either it can be heavy rainfall or it can be lower rainfall. 
fine you have to understand the value of the camber by the pavement surface characteristics such as it can be of concrete pavement in c it can be of bituminous pavement that stands for b it can be water bound macadam surface or it can be earthen road so c p w e c stands for concrete b stands for bituminous w stands for water bound macadam and e stands for earthen road i repeat concrete bituminous water bound macadam and earthen road you have to understand you have to memorize the values by this value 50 40 33 25 this will be replaced over here it will be 50 this will be 40 this will be 33 and this will be 60 means if heavy rainfall region is there and concrete surface is there so 1 is to 50 is the slope if bituminous is there 1 is to 40 if water bound macadam is there 1 is to 33 if earthen road is there 1 is to 25 <coughs> same applies for the lower rainfall region See, these are the types of camber based on the pavement surface and the amount of rainfall. There are two types of amount of rainfall that can be in existence: heavy rainfall or low rainfall. Concrete roads, bituminous road, water bound macadam roads, and earthen roads. 50, 40, 33, 25, 60, 50, 40, 30, and 33. This is how you can remember the values. now let us discuss about psc characteristics that stands for pavement surface characteristic there is a shortcut key the shortcut key stands for f u and l where the f stands for friction we'll discuss that why friction is required then u stands for unevenness and l stands for light reflecting characteristic now let me tell you the friction is one of the most important criteria why because the friction determines the ultimate capacity of the vehicle to break on the road surface friction means it is the resistance provided by the road surface in order to prevent the skidding or slipping of the vehicle while it is traveling on the road surface the road should have sufficient amount of friction if more than sufficient amount of friction is there then what will happen the vehicle will experience various amount of difficulties while traveling if less friction is there it will not experience any kind of friction and it will have the higher chances of accident or collision so there should be sufficient amount of friction and two major criteria are there whenever we are discussing about friction one is skid and second is slip see skidding and slipping are one of the most important criteria whenever we are discussing about pavement surface characteristics they are the sub category sub categorized criteria of friction let me tell you about skidding what is skidding let me tell you see whenever uh, let us understand this concept with the help of an example see this is the road surface and see this is the vehicle see it is traveling on this surface so what will happen that whenever we are traveling in this kind of vehicle in this kind of road and our vehicle is in motion when we apply the brakes partially or fully what happens is when we apply the brakes the wheels of the vehicle will be locked due to the application of brakes they can be locked partially or they can be locked fully but as the vehicle was in motion since a long time it will take some time to get stopped from that place see whenever we apply brakes uh we cannot get we cannot stop our vehicle at the exact point where we are applying the brakes even after applying the brakes the vehicle can cover certain amount of distance see this is the road surface if the vehicle is traveling in this direction if i apply the brakes on this point it will not get stopped over here it will stop over here so this amount of the road surface or the distance will be traveled by the vehicle even after applying of the brakes 
in the longitudinal direction where it is traveling in the uh, traveling direction this kind of phenomenon is called as skidding of vehicle let me explain once again whenever we are traveling in this direction if we apply the brakes our vehicle will travel certain distance in the longitudinal direction where we have, where we were traveling even after the application of brakes <coughs> sorry and that particular phenomenon is called as skidding let us understand that concept thoroughly with the theoretical explanation that the skidding occurs when the wheels of the vehicle slide without revolving see the wheels are not so the wheels will not revolve but it will travel the longitudinal direction <coughs> when the path traveled along the road surface is more than the surface uh, circumferential movement why <coughs> because the circumferential movement will be zero because the wheels are locked but it will travel in longitudinal direction see you can read from this uh, line that when the brakes are applied <coughs> the wheels are locked fully or partially and the vehicle moves forward in the longitudinal direction at this time this phenomenon is called as skidding this can vary from 0 to 100 <coughs> percent fine and the exactly opposite of this skidding phenomenon is called as slipping in skidding what we have observed is that the vehicle is in motion the brakes are applied and it will travel in the longitudinal exactly opposite will occur in the slipping what happens in slipping is whenever we are not traveling in the vehicle is in static uh, motion means it is not traveling it is uh, fixed it is stationary at certain location and if we accelerate the vehicle up to certain speed what will happen <coughs> it will not travel immediately after accelerating but the wheels will revolve more than it travels actually the, the revolving or the revolution or the circumferential movement of the vehicle wheels will more than it actually travels. That phenomenon is called as slipping. Slipping occurs when the vehicle's wheels revolve more than the corresponding longitudinal direction. What was happening in skip, skidding? What was happening in skidding that the wheels were not revolving. They were just traveling longitudinal in direction. And in slipping, the wheels are revolving more than it is traveling in the longitudinal direction of the road surface. Slipping usually occurs where the driving wheel of the vehicle is rapidly accelerated from the stationary position as I have already mentioned. Some of you have seen people doing the 360 of the two wheelers. That is the example of slipping. Majorly, when the surface of the pavement, when the road surface is wet, it is slippery, this kind of phenomenon is experienced. So this is called as slipping. So skidding and slipping are the both phenomena. Then comes about the factors which affect the friction or skid resistance. See the skidding and slipping majorly depends upon the type of pavement surface, whether it is wet, whether it is dry, whether it is bituminous, whether it is concrete, what kind of rough, roughness of surface is there, what kind of friction is there, what is the condition of the pavement, if the condition of pavement is good or it is deteriorated, it is uh, what I can say, uh, it requires maintenance or not, what is the speed of the vehicles and what is the efficiency of the brakes. If the brakes are working properly or not, what is the load of the vehicle, what is the tire pressure, this is how it actually affects. Then another phenomenon is about the unevenness. Unevenness means the steadiness of the road. See, there are two types of road. It can be of less undulation like this and it can be of more undulation like this. Undulations means this kind of small slopes or holes or portholes. See, if the roads are having less undulation, the vehicles will travel with more efficiency, it will have more effective riding quality, comfort quality. If there are more undulations are there, then the mileage of the vehicle will be less, it will be reduced, the driving safety and driving comfortability will be compromised, it will be less. So unevenness is the another criteria, F stands for friction, U stands for unevenness. We have discussed about skidding and slipping in friction. 
friction and unevenness are there. Then comes the light reflecting characteristics. See how the light is being reflected from the road surface whenever you are traveling in the night. That is called as light reflecting characteristic. See, night visibility is affected by the light reflecting characteristics of the pavement surface. If the pavement surface is are of light color or a white pavement is there, concrete pavement is there, there will be good amount of visibility as a driver. But there are minus points also, minus points are that due to white color, it can create glare in the eyes of a driver and sometimes the eye may suffer from strain issues. Visibility may be compromised when there is bright sunny day and high amount of sunlight is reflecting on the road surface. So it will create glare on the eyes. Vice versa, if bituminous surface is there, means black top pavement, black colored pavement is there, black colored road is there, the visibility will be very less whenever we are traveling in the night duration. If the pavement surface is wet, if the night traveling is there and if the surface, surface, pavement surface is of black color, bituminous, then there will be issues of comfort and safety with the driver. So that stands for F. So we have discussed about F, friction, we have discussed about skidding and slipping, we have discussed about unevenness, less undulations and more undulations and then we have discussed about the light reflecting current. Now we'll discuss about super elevation. See, this is one of the most important as well as interesting criteria. See, let us discuss about the concept first. See, if you are traveling on the surface like this, and if this is the hilly road, and if you are traveling over here, you will experience that while traveling on this road, two type of forces will act, centrifugal force and self weight in this direction and centripetal force in the outer direction. If we are traveling on the curved path, our vehicle will tend to experience the exterior force. If we are traveling on this path, our vehicle will tend to get stretched in the outer direction. This that we have that we have observed in this type of surface. If what we do, if we raise the surface, this is the inner edge and this is the outer edge. If we raise the surface like this, means this is the inner edge and this is the outer edge. See, if this outer edge is raised with the inner edge, means if it is like this. Instead of this, it will be like this. This is inner edge. This is outer edge. What will happen whenever you are traveling on this road, the vehicle will not get fumbled down from the outer region if the road is like this. If the road is like this, it will be having the chances of accident. But if it is like this, it will have lesser chances of get over dropping. So when the vehicle travels a horizontal curve, the centrifugal force acts horizontally outwards through the center of gravity of the vehicle. It can cause the overturning of the vehicle to avoid this trouble, the outer, see, if this is the road, this is the inner edge, this is the outer edge. If we raise the outer edge with respect to inner edge, what will happen is, the, the uh, road will able to counteract this centrifugal and centripetal force and it will not get overturning in the outer direction and the accident chances will be less. So the amount of, amount by which the outer edge is raised with the inner edge. See, this is the ground level, this is the inner, this is the outer. So, this is the difference. It is like this. This is the inner, this is the outer. If we raise surface like this, so the amount of, amount by which the outer edge is raised with compared to the inner edge is known as super elevation. It is also called as Kant or banking and the same phenomenon applies in the railway engineering also that we have already uh, learned. So this is about, about super elevation. Now let us discuss about certain advantages of super elevation such as 
the passenger and goods can travel safely the vehicles can travel horizontal curve with more speed the traffic volume can also get increased the accident is accident rates are less maintenance is also decreased and there is no need to construct any drain or outer because due to the raised outer is the water will automatically drain off easy so this is about super elevation we have learned about pavement surface characteristics types of camber uh, what is camber concept of camber and super elevation fine there are three types of camber parabolic straight and combination usually the combinational camber is used let me show you see it can parabolic camber it can be straight but usually combination of straight and parabolic is used so we have learned this things i hope you have gone through the concept thoroughly thank you so much